Hi guys, this is Dr. Ahmed Ergin from Sugar MD, the Trusted Diabetes Channel. Today we are talking about vitamin E. I'm sure that question came to your mind at some point. Should I take vitamin E? Are there any benefits? And the literature is kind of confusing. So I did the work for you, did all the re literature research, and today we are going to touch base on a lot of things about vitamin E. It's not going to be too long, don't worry. We're going to summarize the daily intake, recommended daily intake of vitamin E, the sources of vitamin E, the problems associated with vitamin E deficiency, and how much vitamin E do you really need if you want to replace it, and the consequences or risks associated with vitamin E, and actually we're going to dig into a little bit more into the potential benefits and if they are real. Let's get started guys. Hi guys, thank you for watching. Uh, quickly, I have a quiz for you in the description below. So after you watch this video, take the quiz, answer the questions. The more questions you answer correctly, the higher the chance. And one in three will win a chapter from my book. It's going to be delivered electronically to you, a real chapter from my The Ultimate Diabetes book. So go ahead, finish the video, take the quiz, and win. So let's start with the recommended intake of vitamin E. Actually, it is not difficult to get vitamin E from food sources. It's only 15 milligram of vitamin E or alpha tocopherol. And this is, if you're having a healthy diet, uh, you will be able to get that easily. So 15 milligram basically is what you need as an adult. Now, where do you get the vitamin E from? Well, for from a diabetic standpoint, uh, you should be able to get your vitamin E from nuts, seeds, green leafy vegetables. Well, it is found in grains and, and some milk and stuff like that, but you don't want to overboard. And a lot of vegetable oils has vitamin have vitamin E as well, but again, you don't want to be having too much vegetable oil. And if you want to stick with, a, with an oil, that would be the olive oil as we discussed before. So why do we really need vitamin E to begin with, right? Because vitamin E is an antioxidant. And uh, what does antioxidant mean? Well, when we produce energy from food, from glucose, from whatever, fat, protein, your body creates something called the reactive oxygen species. These are unpaired electrons and they basically touch anything and oxidizes them. Oxidation is like rusting. So that's how you get old, that's how you get cardiovascular disease, that's how you get cancer. That's pretty much what we die from, right? Either heart attack or cancer, you know, eliminating the accidents and all that. But basically that is what kills people. So since we are trying to prolong life and have a healthy life, not just prolong life. We want to make sure that we have more antioxidants which will protect you from the oxidative damage uh, that comes naturally from the food. Some foods create more oxidative damage than the others as uh, xenobiotics for example or the unhealthy foods that we have been discussing for the last two years in this channel. So but to be honest with you you need to arm yourself with more antioxidants. Now vitamin E happens to be one of the antioxidants. That's why you know it makes sense to think that okay well I'm gonna take more vitamin D and suddenly everything will be good. Well, uh, that's that may not be the case. Again, I believe in, and not just I believe in, and I think that is a fact in the universe, uh, the moderation, having the middle road is always the good thing for you. You don't want to go excessive with anything, and I'll talk to you about the complications or risks about excessive vitamin E. So, for example, I'll just jump to it, actually. So, if you are on blood thinners, it could be aspirin, Plavix, warfarin, you name it, Coumadin, Perlanta, just came to my mind. But anyway, so, if you are on these blood thinners, the high dose of vitamin E has been shown to increase the bleeding risk. So, what is a high dose of vitamin E? That would be around, I think the studies show that 400 units of vitamin E. Now, 
if you take less than that, would you get benefit? Now, double-blinded studies do not necessarily show reduction in cardiovascular disease or cancer, and it has been studied multiple times. You may find one or two studies here and there that show some possible benefit, but when you look at the overall picture, look at all the studies, really the benefit is very this very minimal, uh, if anything, uh, and most studies do not show any benefit, and there is some increased risk of bleeding if you are already on blood thinners so i think what you should do for vitamin e guys eat more foods the nuts seeds green leafy vegetables that have the vitamin e but if you're taking multivitamin and there's some vitamin e in there that's not excessive uh, not more than 400 units i would recommend that that's 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 fine especially if you're kind of a steak and potato type of guy uh, and you're not really getting any um you know vegetables or anything like that and um then you may want to get some supplementation now, if you uh, are vitamin E deficient, it can cause cognitive decline, it can cause the macular degeneration in the eyes, it can increase the risk of potential cardiovascular disease or cancer formation. But again, vitamin E is just only one player among all the other antioxidants so there's a lot of other antioxidants we talk about all the time so you don't necessarily have to be hung up on the vitamin e so uh, vitamin e deficiency like clear-cut vitamin e deficiency is very uncommon so as a result you know you're not going to suffer the the vitamin e deficiency diseases uh, so to speak so there is uh, there is a role of vitamin E in immune um, regulation as well. So maybe it can increase your risk of infections. But again, that can that's not a um, easy claim to make. So sometimes uh, the things in theory doesn't necessarily translate in practice. So it's good to know that the vitamin E is an antioxidant. You should have vitamin D in your vitamin E in your diet. There is no reason to check vitamin. E in your blood, but a higher uh, vitamin E in your diet uh, and maybe supplementally can be beneficial. But, uh, but if you're having a good diet, which helps you with your blood sugar regulation, blood pressure regulation, you will have adequate, uh, adequate amount of vitamin E anyway. So I'm not big on just buying a bunch of supplements and vitamins instead of a good diet. So you should, you should still have a good diet because if you don't have a good diet, you're inviting the bad guys. So even if you're trying to load on the good guys like vitamin E and other supplements and stuff, but if you are if you have a lot of enemies, your body is subject to a lot of bad food, then you're not going to win that war. Anyways, guys, I hope this video is helpful. Give a thumbs up, share this video, and we'll see you in the next one. Hey, guys, I hope you're enjoying this channel so far, and I hope you subscribed already. If you didn't, do it. And if you did, watch this video right there. I think that will help you too.